All right, imagine for a second you're the concept artist working on a new driving combat game. And at first the aesthetic is clean and simple. And then the game designers come back and they've got these really fun additions. But the result is a little more cluttered. Is it possible to keep the functionality of this, but the clarity of this? Welcome to episode 11 of the Concept Art Playbook. I've teamed up with a game designer to create a series of 30 concept art challenges for you to tackle. Like usual, Ryan has created two briefs, one for me to demonstrate and then one for your homework. Let's take a look at mine first. The brief has us working on a third-person vehicle combat called Drive Faster. So it says, This Spy Hunter meets Drive-inspired vehicle combat game transports the player into Ryan Gosling's driver's seat, but with a hell of a lot more firepower. You're a mercenary for hire specializing in jobs that require four wheels and a lot of speed. As you might imagine, the player's vehicle is both heavily armored and packed with all sorts of gadgets and weapons. Now this time Ryan was nice enough to actually include a design sketch, and I just love it when designers and writers include an additional drawing. This is speaking my language. But as we can see, the shapes are kind of all over the place. For today's challenge, I'm going to make an updated draft of this diagram, and I'm going to be focusing on visual clarity. Now in the last lesson, we learned about using alignment to indicate order and disorder. So that's going to be our first tool. We want to utilize alignment to make the car seem clear and ordered. Now the next tool though is a new Gazalt rule called prognance. And apparently this roughly translates to the good shape. And all it really means is when we see a complicated object, our brains immediately try and simplify it down into basic shapes. So to make our designs easier to read and easier to comprehend, we're just going to aim to simplify major forms. But for this driving game, I still need to include all these elements that Ryan's indicated on the diagram. My goal is to retain these features, but to make a more appealing, streamlined envelope to fit them into. For my first step, I'm going to start with an actual car chassis. Here I have picked a classic 70s Japanese sports car. I just feel like it's a good match for the Ryan Gosling drive movie influence. So that's going to be my base. And as a quick aside here, your homework isn't going to be a car design. It's actually a spaceship. So the blueprint that I'm starting with here is really just a shortcut for the sake of this video. The process I'm about to demonstrate is just shape revision, and it could just as easily have started with my own sketch. But now I've got a puzzle. There's Ryan's design that I'm aiming to accommodate, and there's the base car that I'm using as a template. Now whatever shapes I come up with will be some compromise between the two. It's going to fall in this gap here. I think by recessing parts into the frame, I'll probably be able to fit some of them, but I do think that overall the silhouette is going to need to grow a little bit as well. Now when tackling a puzzle like this, the first step that I do is called a bubble diagram. And a bubble diagram just helps discover the size and placement of objects, and it doesn't get into their specific shapes. So it's a quick way to shift stuff around. And that gives me a general blocked out layout. Now it's time to wrap these parts in a streamlined shape. And we want the shape to be reminiscent of the real world car that I'm using as reference. And here's where some drawing technique comes into play. But actually, before I get to the demonstration, let's pause a sec here. Out of these 30 challenges, the last video on linear alignment and this video on streamlined shapes are the only times I'll be talking about drawing technique. That concept art playbook is primarily about the problem solving involved in design. So on one hand, if you don't have much experience with drawing, and this video right here starts to feel a bit over your head, don't worry about it. All the other challenges in this collection focus on problem solving. Now on the other hand, maybe you actually really like the idea of improving your drawing skills. You just don't have a lot of experience yet. That's great too. If that's the case, I encourage you to check out the other videos in the Control Paint Free Library. There's tons of videos there that talk about drawing foundation skills. Okay, back to the demo. In the last video we dealt with linear alignment. It was the way that objects related to each other spatially. Well, I don't know if curve alignment is actually a term, but that's what I'm going to describe here. I like to think about two things when I'm trying to make shapes relate to each other. The first thing is parallelism. So for instance, we could imagine if this is the top of the hood, and actually I'm going to turn on symmetry real quick here. Okay, so 
this is the top of the windshield, sorry. I could make a parallel line that's sort of an inset line based on this one that was already there. I could do the same back here. And then if I wanted it to turn the corner, I could make it parallel to that. Now I don't need to keep that same border thickness. I could have a wide parallel here and a narrower parallel right here. And maybe even where they meet, I could have it be a bit of a curve. But that the major lines are referencing existing elements of the drawing is just a good way to go. So that's parallelism. The next one is extension. So if I wanted to have a shape, maybe start parallel here, parallel to the window, and then I want it to do something off in this direction. One way I could do that would be to imagine the line of this window here extending. And then somewhere I could cross, and maybe here I'll have it cross with parallel. And these are just kind of temporary construction lines. So maybe then here I'm going to start going parallel to this line right here. And then maybe I have a totally separate element. So since I'm dealing with potentially a turret or a cannon of some sort on top, I could imagine a shape that maybe the center of this circle aligns with this window cut, and then I want it to be parallel with the top of those windows there, and then maybe to be parallel with the windshield curve, like that. These are all construction lines, don't need them, but it gives the shape I've just drawn a certain amount of strength. And maybe actually I want to cut this somewhere in the middle. Well, I could do that with more parallelism. So here I could be parallel that way. I could extend this out and maybe now the alignment matters. So actually there are already these cut lines on the hood. Maybe that detail I pull up to use as where I want to terminate the shape right here. So I'll have that go to there, erase my construction line, and so what I've got is a strong shape that relates to the other shapes. I don't know if curve alignment is a term for that, but I think it's a useful skill. Now another technique that I like to use is essentially the same as the curve alignment, only I'm using it to think about volumes. So if you can imagine me wanting to attach this sort of cannon to fit it into the general envelope of this car. I'm going to need to just add a little more space, almost like you're adding clay or building up volume. Well, a great way to do that is to use curve alignment. So let me fade in here the volume that I'm talking about adding. So this gives enough space when seen in side view to contain the cannon that I need, which is going to be kind of cut down into the surface here, like this. You can see from the front, we start with a larger volume and then cut away a void in order to fit the cannon barrel. But let's take a step back here. How did I come to this shape? This is the good shape that we're hoping for. We want something that feels unified and that references what was already there. Well, what I've done is I've just taken the existing curve, thought about my bubble diagram where I needed to have a little more space, and then you can imagine just kind of bending the curve up a bit trying to maybe be as smooth as you can. So if I did that, it resembles the initial curve. I carry that off in that direction. And then the question is, how do I terminate it? Well, what about extension? So I could just extend the line here of that rake of the windshield. And so there I've got the intersection. I decide how I want that to go. And so maybe there I kind of smooth it off a bit, just like so. Or I could even be more aggressive, I could average it out into a gently sloping curve. And the end result is a profile that really resonates with the initial shapes, but it gives me that extra bit of volume that I could fit the cannon into. So you can imagine inside view, there's a cannon barrel here that goes to about there. And then if the driver is sitting, you know, right here, Behind their head and behind the seat, there's plenty of room down here. So I could fill this void, all this stuff back here, 
could be where the ammunition goes and all the different kind of mechanicals that would be required for such a large gun. And then from the front view, let's take a look at the end results here. I did the same thing. So what I've done here is just said, I, okay, I want to add volume to the top. How do I do that? Well, start with an existing shape, go off in that direction, extend it off, then make a line that's parallel with the top of the roof, just like so. And then just kind of clean up that um, intersection right there. And what I end up being left with is something that looks like this. So it gives me the extra space I need, but the shape is as unobtrusive as possible. It really matches what was there from the beginning. And so here you can see that I've taken this general layout from a bubble diagram, and what I've ended up with is a unified shape. It has a, generally speaking, a very simple silhouette, but it also still has space for all the elements. And so when Ryan had a bunch of stuff sticking out of the silhouette, I figured out ways to recess it and sort of include it within the general shape. Simple, clean, and easy to understand. So now that you've seen how to approach a challenge like this, let's get out the drawing and the brief that Ryan has created for your homework. Now, just like with my car example, you're aiming to update his sketch in order to have a clean, unified silhouette but it still needs to feature all the elements in the diagram. You can move them around wherever you want as long as you have it do what it needs to do, but also have a cleaner layout. To download the homework, follow the link below the video. And don't worry about color or polish. The major point here is thinking about a simple shape with clean lines. So have fun with this, but when you're finished, I'll see you in the next lesson.